A very good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television, where we get you the biggest developing news stories at the top of one. I'm Ashwara Kapoor, and here are the headlines. IITs are India's instrument of a transformation today, says Prime Minister Modi. Addressing students at IIT Bombay says, World views these institutions as nurseries of unicorn startups. Asks them to innovate in India and innovate for humanity. Kerala Chief Minister makes aerial survey of flood affected areas in the state. 29 people killed, over 50,000 rendered homeless. Red alert issued in eight districts. Compensation announced for families of victims and those who lost homes and land. Amit tight security, BJP President Amit Shah's rally in Kolkata, first public meet in the state following publication of Assam's NRC. Srinamul Congress up to protest in the state against NRC publication. NASA's uh, Parker Solar Probe launched today. Closest probe but to the sun to date to study its corona that creates a solar wind aimed to help scientists forecast changes in Earth's space environment. And England to begin their reply to India's first inning score of 107 runs on day three of the first test at Lords today. James Anderson's uh, five-wicket haul reduced India to a mere total as visitors uh, look to level the five-match series after losing the first test. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today addressed the students at IIT Bombay during their 56th convocation ceremony and stressing on innovation, he said that the best ideas come from young minds in campuses and not government buildings and fancy offices. The Prime Minister also said that IITs have encouraged the setting up of several engineering colleges around the country and have emerged as a global brand. He also stressed that innovation and enterprise are found of making India a developed nation. ये सिर्फ टेक्नोलॉजी की पढ़ाई से जुड़े स्थान भर नहीं रह गए हैं, बल्कि IIT आज इंडिया इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन बन गए हैं। हम जब ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन की बात करते हैं, तो स्टार्टअप को जिस क्रांति की तरह देश आगे बढ़ रहा है उसका एक बहुत बड़ा सोर्स हमारे आईआईटी है आज दुनिया आईआईटी को यूनिकॉर्न स्टार्टअप की नर्सरी के रूप में मान रही है यानी वो स्टार्टअप अभी भारत में शुरू हो रहे हैं जिनकी भविष्य में उसकी वैल्यू एक अरब डॉलर से अधिक होने की संभावना जताई जाती है यह एक प्रकार से तकनीक के दर्पण जिसमें दुनिया को भविष्य नजर आता है साथियों आज दुनिया भर में जितने भी बिलियन डॉलर स्टार्टअप्स हैं उनमें दर्जनों ऐसे हैं जिनको आईआईटी से निकले लोगों ने स्थापित किया है इनोवेशन इज द बज वर्ड ऑफ द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी एनी सोसाइटी दैट डज नॉट इनोवेट विल स्टैगनेंट दैट इंडिया इज इमर्जिंग एज अ हब फॉर स्टार्टअप सोस दैट द थ्रस्ट फॉर इनोवेशन इज वेरी मच we must build on this further and make india the most attractive destination for innovation and enterprise and this will not happen through government efforts only it will happen to youngsters like you the best ideas do not come in government buildings or in fancy offices 
they come in campuses like yours in the minds of youngsters like you on to news from Parliament. Uh, well, both Houses of Parliament uh, were adjourned a sine die on Friday and adjourning the Rajya Sabha sine die, Chairman M. Vankhya Naidu said that the productivity of the Upper House during the 17 sittings of the monsoon session was over 74%, which is uh, three times the productivity of the House in the past two sessions. Rajya Sabha passed uh, 14 bills in the monsoon session, including the SCs and STs Prevention of Atrocities Amendment Bill and Constitution 123rd Amendment Bill, giving constitutional status to the National Commission for Backward Classes. The chairman said that 120 issues were raised in the zero hour during the monsoon session, while replies to 91 questions were given on the floor of the House. As the monsoon session of Parliament concludes today, it is time for us to take stock of what is this August House could do and could not do during the session. Of the 18 scheduled sittings, the House decided to take leave on the occasion of Guri Purnima Day, and so we had 17 sittings at our disposal. On another day, the House was adjourned on the day as a mark of respect to former Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, late Dr. Kalingar Karunanidhi, after making obituary reference. Going by the trend of the previous two sessions, the media forecast of, for this session has been that this would be also a washout, with election fever setting in. I am glad. And so would all of you that for once media has been proved wrong. I compliment all of you for the same. Though it's not to my full satisfaction, but still, <laughs> Southwest monsoon is very critical for the economy of our country, and it has been by and large normal with only about 5% deficit in rainfall so far. And the monsoon session of parliament also also brought new tidings, mark, making a break from the last two sessions, which much to the delight of all those who have a stake in our parliamentary democracy. With the productivity of more than 74% measured in terms of the functional time against the total time available, this session proved to be about three times more productive than the last budget session, whose productivity was only about 25%. This is a remarkable improvement and the credit goes to all of you. Still, I am not fully happy. As far as the legislative output is concerned, this August House has passed 14 bills during this session, while only, while only 10 bills could be passed during the last two sessions put together. A productive uh, session of uh, the Lok Sabha also came to an end as uh, the Speaker adjourned the House sine die. Speaker Sumitra Mahajan said that the House was much more productive than the last two sessions. She said that the House worked for 112 hours in 17 sittings. The House also debated uh, the no-confidence motion against the government uh, for over 11 hours on 20th of July, after which the government defeated the motion in the vote. During the monsoon session, 21 bills were passed by the House. इस सत्र में लोकसभा ने समाज कल्याण से जुड़े ऐसे विधेयक पारित किए हैं सबने मिलके जिसका व्यापक प्रभाव समाज के वंचित वर्गों के हितों पर पड़ेगा जैसे संविधान संशोधन विधेयक जिसके पारित होने से राष्ट्र पिछड़ा वर्ग आयोग के संवैधानिक रूप से गठन का मार्ग प्रशस्त हुआ है उसी प्रकार अनुसूचित जातियां और अनुसूचित जनजातियां संशोधन विधेयक भी पारित किया गया है and Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar held a press conference today over the monsoon session. And Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Vijay Goyal also addressed the media. Satra, this bar, pichle 20 saal mein, sabse sartak satra. Lok Sabha ne. 118 फीसदी काम किया और राज्यसभा ने 74 फीसदी काम किया इससे ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण यह है अविश्वास प्रस्ताव को सरकार ने हरा दिया और विपक्ष को जो ये दुसास किया था अविश्वास प्रस्ताव लेने लाने का उनको एक ऐसे एक 
संदेशा मिला मुंह तोड़ जवाब दिया गया यानी बीजेपी एनडीए और एनडीए प्लस ये सब साथ है राज्यसभा का जो सेशन है वो मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव सेशन हुआ है मैं कह सकता हूं कि पिछले ये इस बार की एनडीए की सरकार में सबसे ज्यादा उत्पादकता रही इस सेशन के अंदर और उसका एक बड़ा कारण ये भी रहा कि सेशन आरंभ होने से पहले जो हमने विरोधी पार्टियों से बात की उनके घरों तक हम पहुंचे और उनसे ये उनको ये कन्विंस करने की कोशिश की कि ये केवल पॉलिटिकल रहा राजनीतिक मामला नहीं है केवल बल्कि इसमें जो बिल आ रहे हैं वो जनता से जुड़े हुए हैं इसलिए आपका जो विरोध है वो बिल के प्रति होना चाहिए या उसमें आपको संशोधन देने चाहिए तो मैं समझता हूं कि उनसे संपर्क करने का भी लाभ हुआ And now let's get you an update on uh, the situation in Kerala as, as far as floods are concerned. Well, uh, Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan conducted an aerial survey of the flood-affected areas of the state. And after the survey and meeting those affected by the floods, the Chief Minister announced an ex-gratia of four lakh rupees for the family of those killed in the floods. A compensation of a ten lakh rupees has also been announced for those who have lost their homes and land. And the five shutters of the Eduki Dam were opened yesterday. The water level of the dam, reported at 6 a.m. today, is 2,401.16 feet, with its full reserve level being 2,403 feet. The opening of the dam shutters led to the Periyar River flooding. 20 flooding and 29 people have died in the state due to floods and landslides following heavy and incessant rains. Meanwhile the Met Department has predicted more rain in the state for the next 48 hours the army navy air force coast guard and the NDRF are engaged in rescue and relief 439 relief camps have also been set up across the state with over 50000 people rendered homeless a red alert has been issued for eight districts in the state Meanwhile, uh, Congress President Rahul Gandhi expressed concern over the situation and urged party workers uh, to help those in need. Well, the situation in Kerala is extremely bad. I mean, this is completely unprecedented rain, which never happened before like this, in, not in our memory at all. So, uh, out of 14 districts in Kerala, 11 are under water, and. Um, whole lot of places are cut off due to landslide so we have enormous problem we have possibly thousands and lakhs of people who have to be moved into shelter homes provided with drinking water sanitation food medical aid so all these the center and the state government together are working the honorable prime minister spoke to the uh, honorable chief minister of kerala and we are provided the complete armed forces the air force navy as well as uh, the army they are all there the center relief teams are there so we are rushing more forces out there and uh, whatever is required by the state government we are providing and the chief minister apparently is pretty happy with the kind of assistance which the government of india is providing and the uh, honorable home minister mr rajnath singh ji and on sunday he's going to spend the whole day in kerala and he's going to have get a first hand impression of what is happening and also have a coordination meeting to ensure that whatever is required from the center that is provided well the situation never before in the history of kerala this type of a devastating flood and ha never happened uh, more than 100 lives has been lost a very serious situation is prevailing in the state all the dams are all 24 dams are now opened so very very serious situation is there i request the central government to declare this a national uh, disaster and more and adequate funds may be uh, allotted to st the state of kerala so that more help can be given to the people who are affected by that and as far as the entire country situation is concerned well according to the home ministry data as many as 718 people have lost their lives in incidents related to floods and rains in seven states during the monsoon season so far according to the ministry's national emergency response center 171 people lost their lives in uttar pradesh 170 people died in west bengal 178 perished in kerala and 139 in maharashtra 
Gujarat saw 52 deaths while 44 people died in Assam and 8 perished in Nagaland. A total of 26 people were also missing in Kerala and West Bengal, while 244 others received injuries in rain-related incidents in the states. The deluge and rains have hit 26 districts in Maharashtra, 22 in West Bengal, 23 in Assam, 14 in Kerala, 12 in Uttar Pradesh, 11 in Nagaland and 10 in Gujarat. In Assam, 11.45 lakh people have borne the brunt of rains and floods, which also hit crops in more than 27,000 hectares of land. And in midday news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. More hai Bharat ka aur Mauritius ki do do. दो नहीं नहीं एक और एक ग्यारह ग्यारवा विश्व हिंदी सम्मेलन मॉरिशस 18 से 20 अगस्त 2018 Welcome back after the break. M. Venkaya Naidu completes a one-year in office both as the Vice President and as the Chairman of the Rajya Sabha. On 11th of August 2017, M. Venkaya Naidu took oath as the Vice President at the Darbar Hall in Rashtrapati Bhavan. It has been an eventful year marked with several milestones. And taking to Twitter, the Vice President recounted major milestones both as the Vice President and as Chairman of Rajya Sabha. In the first year of his term, M. Venkaya Naidu engaged actively with the leaders of different countries. He met leaders of as many as the 22 countries visiting India. As Vice President, he also visited 28 out of the 29 states and three union territories during the year, which is a record for any Vice President. He also has made strenuous efforts to address some of the pressing problems facing the country through his interactions with students, farmers and scientists. It has also been an eventful one year in office for him as the Rajya Sabha chairman. From setting precedents to making the house technology friendly, he has taken various initiatives to raise the level of discourse in the house. His first year in office has been marked by quick decision making and a number of firsts. On to some other news, amid heightened security, BJP chief Amit Shah is slated to address a public rally in Kolkata in some time from now. Amit Shah's first rally in the city this year is expected to set the tone for his party's political battle against the Mamata Banerjee-led TMC ahead of the 2019 general elections. The rally will also be his first visit to the state post-NRC publication in Assam. Meanwhile, the Trinamool Congress is taking out rallies across West Bengal today to protest the publication of the National Register of Citizens in Assam. Kolkata, however, has been exempted from this plan. The final draft of the NRC was published on 30th of July in Assam and over 40 lakh people did not make it to the list. And Congress President Rahul Gandhi will launch the party's election campaign in Rajasthan today with a day-long visit to the state capital, Jaipur. In Jaipur, he will address the scores of party leaders and workers who will gather from across the state. And according to party sources, Rahul Gandhi will discuss the roadmap and strategy for the polls and guide the party leaders and workers during the visit. The Congress President is likely to visit the state again in the month end and also another visit is scheduled in September. And a special Fugitive Economic Offenders Act court in Mumbai today issued a public summons to the sister and brother of absconding uh, diamond tear Nirav Modi, the main accused in the PNB fraud case. Uh, they have been asked to appear before it on 25th of September. The court said that if uh, they fail to appear, their assets will be confiscated under the newly enacted act, which is aimed at curbing big ticket economic crimes. The court has asked the duo to appear before it on the same date on which Nirav Modi has also been summoned by it under the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act.
Let's get you all the international news. The U.S. President Donald Trump has doubled uh, U.S.'s tariffs on Turkish steel and aluminium. Well, the move comes after the fall of uh, the Turkish currency lira. In a tweet, Donald Trump said that the currency was weak against our very strong dollar, adding that the U.S. relations with Turkey are not good at this time. He said that aluminium tariffs with respect to Turkey would be raised to 20% and steel to 50%. In the last 24 hours, the lira has lost around 20% of its value. It has already fallen more than 40% in the past year. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said in a speech uh, that the drop was part of a campaign led by foreign powers. He called on the citizens of his country to exchange foreign currency and gold for lira, calling it an economic war. Meanwhile, Turkey also said that additional tariffs were against the rule of the World Trade Organization and warned that it would retaliate against the U.S. tariff move. News from Pakistan. Well, Indian High Commissioner Ajay Bisaria met uh, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf chairman Imran Khan at his residence in Islamabad on Friday. And Bisaria congratulated the Prime Minister in waiting over his victory in the general elections last month. And during their talks, Bisaria raised the issue of cross-border terrorism and infiltration. And Imran Khan spoke about Kashmir. Bisaria later tweeted that he had a positive and constructive discussion with Imran Khan. Bisaria also gifted a cricket bat signed by the entire cricket team of our country to Khan. Bisaria also felicitated Khan on behalf of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Meanwhile, PTI leader Senator Faisal Javed said on Friday that Imran Khan will take oath of a Prime Minister on 18th of August. The inaugural session of the newly elected National Assembly will be held on Monday, 13th of August, wherein the newly elected members of the lower house of parliament would take oath, after which they would elect a leader of the house, that is Prime Minister of the country. In last month's uh, national election, the PTI emerged as the single largest party with 116 seats. It has staged a coalition that crosses the 137 seats needed for majority. Let's get you all the sporting action after a complete washout on day one. The Indian batsmen went down England's probing pace on day two of the second test match at Lord's. James Anderson took five wickets as England bowled India out for 107 runs on a rain-affected second day of the second test at Lords. Chris Wokes took two wickets, including that of captain Virat Kohli, in an extended evening session as India, already 1-0 down in the series, folded at only 35.2 overs. Only the intervention of Mohammad Shami, the number 11, pushed India beyond 100 before Ishan Sharma was uh, trapped LBW by Anderson to wrap up the innings. And uh, with the weather set to improve today, India will face a sizable task to drag themselves back into the match. And uh, Ajay Jairam and uh, Mithun uh, Manjunath uh, progressed to the men's singles uh, semi-finals of the Vietnam Open Super Tour 100 Badminton Tournament. Former world number 13, Jairam dished out a spirited performance to outwit Canada's Sheng Xiaodong in a thrilling contest. He will next face a seven-seeded Japanese Yu Igarashi today. Meanwhile, in another match, a young shuttler Mithun saw off China's Zhou Zegi. He will square off against his Indonesian opponent. However, it was a curtains for former national champion Rituparna Das as she lost to her Thailand opponent in the women's singles quarterfinals. And well, before we wrap up, well, NASA will send its uh, Parker solar probe to the sun's surface today. The launch is uh, from uh, the Vertical Interact Integration Facility at uh, Crepe uh, Canaveral at uh, the Air Force Station's launch complex. It will be a seven-year-long mission to get close to the sun than ever before, 3.8 million miles from its surface. The aim is to zoom through the solar 
corona to study this outermost part that gives rise to the solar wind. R R corona is the, the region of the sun which is only visible from Earth when the moon blocks out the stars, the light during total solar eclipse. The corona is said to hold the answers to several outstanding questions related to the sun's activity as well as its processes. So we'll launch uh, from, from Kennedy on Saturday morning on our beautiful Delta IV Heavy. And the first thing we will do when we get on orbit is encounter the planet Venus. We use Venus to give us a gravity assist. We're going closer, as Karen already said, to 3.83 million miles above the sun's surface. So we'll use seven Venus gravity assists. We'll gradually walk closer. We'll take sort of seven giant steps closer to the sun until we're in that final region. And with that, uh, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.